with the idea of how and the, is it possible that somehow this was involved in the utilization of plasma energy? You know, there have been reports of anomalous lights and even ball lightning. That's more suggestive of what might have been going on here. And I think in the ongoing research, these are the kinds of questions that are going to come up. The Sumerians truly are the pioneers at the threshold of recorded history, with their civilization flourishing in what is now modern-day Iraq, alongside parts of Iran, Syria, and Turkey. This fertile crescent of Mesopotamia saw the Sumerians emerge over 5,000 years ago, with their development of cuneiform writing being one of humanity's earliest and most significant leaps into the world of written communication. This invention not only changed their world, but also set the trajectory for future civilizations. The evolution of Sumer began around 4,500 BCE, with the formation of unique cultural traits leading to the rise of significant urban centers by 3,000 BCE. This transformative period laid the foundations for complex societies, it all started with small, agrarian communities that exploited the rich soils deposited by the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. The Uruk period, from 4000 to 3100 BCE, marked a significant milestone with the rise of Uruk, one of the world's first major cities. This era saw the birth of writing, monumental architecture and expansive trade networks. By the early dynastic period between 2900 and 2343 BCE, City-states like Ur, Eridu, and Lagash had developed distinct political structures, religious practices, and cultural identities. Each Sumerian city-state operated as an independent city-kingdom, encompassing both the urban center and its surrounding lands. Governed by a king or a lugal believed to be divinely appointed, these rulers were responsible for their city's well-being, overseeing military, judicial, and religious activities. As time passed, the role of priests grew, mirroring the city-state's increasingly theocratic governance. The economy was primarily agricultural, supported by a centralized system where goods were collected as taxes and redistributed based on social status and need. Trade was vital, both within Sumer and with distant regions, to procure scarce resources like timber and metals. Sumerian society was distinctly hierarchical, ranging from the ruling elites and free citizens to slaves who were often prisoners of war or debt slaves. The elites dominated religious institutions, land and economic resources, while free citizens contributed to the city's economy and defense. Religion played a central role, with each city-state worshipping its own patron deity, housed in grand temples that also served as economic hubs and storehouses, the iconic ziggurat, a massive terraced structure, became a hallmark of Sumerian architecture, symbolizing both religious devotion and the social hierarchy of these ancient people. Let's take a closer look at some of the prominent urban centers that defined Sumerian civilization, each unique in its contributions and characteristics. Uruk, often heralded as the world's first true city, was a hub of innovation and power. It boasted monumental architecture like the Anu Ziggurat and the White Temple, and is celebrated for developing cuneiform writing. Meanwhile, Ur was renowned for its magnificent Ziggurat of Ur, and served as a major religious center dedicated to the moon god Nana. Besides its spiritual significance, Ur was a vital trade and military center, brimming with wealth and artistic accomplishments. Then there's Eridu, considered one of the oldest cities, which held immense religious importance, dedicated to Enki, the god of water, knowledge, and creation. The archaeological treasures found here provide a glimpse into some of the earliest religious practices. Lagash, known for its artistic and architectural achievements, played a crucial role in the religious and political spheres of Sumer, and has left behind a wealth of archaeological evidence showcasing the rich Sumerian culture. The invention of cuneiform around 3400 BCE by the Sumerians marked a monumental leap in human civilization. This system of writing, which began as simple pictographs on clay tokens, evolved into a sophisticated script of wedge-shaped marks. The transition from pictographs to cuneiform was driven by the need for a more efficient and flexible means of communication, able to capture the intricacies of administrative, economic and literary language, the reed stylus used to inscribe these symbols on clay tablets ensured their durability, allowing these documents to survive for millennia. 
Cuneiform was not only a Sumerian invention but also a legacy adopted and adapted by various civilizations, including the Akkadians, Babylonians, Assyrians, and Hittites. Each culture tailored the script to suit their language, demonstrating its versatility. The applications of cuneiform were extensive and varied. In terms of administration, it was used to record economic transactions, manage taxation, and keep inventories for temples and palaces, aiding in the centralized control of resources. In literature, it preserved the epic of Gilgamesh and numerous poems, hymns, and prayers that reveal much about the spiritual life of the time. The legal realm also benefited from cuneiform. It recorded laws and contracts, including the famous Code of Hammurabi, and documented legal disputes and resolutions. This glimpse into the legal procedures and social norms of ancient Mesopotamian civilizations underscores the complexity of their society. Furthermore, cuneiform was instrumental in preserving religious texts, including mythological narratives and rituals, which highlight the deeply intertwined nature of religion and daily life in these ancient communities. The Sumerians, thriving in the fertile plains of ancient Mesopotamia, were true pioneers not only in creating the first forms of writing and establishing urban centers, but also in their advanced contributions to astronomy, mathematics, and agriculture. These innovations had profound impacts, laying foundational stones for future civilizations and even influencing our modern world. In astronomy and mathematics, for example, the Sumerians developed one of the earliest known lunar calendars, closely tied to the moon's cycles. This calendar was crucial for organizing agricultural activities, religious festivals, and civic responsibilities. It was structured around 12 lunar months, with the addition of an extra month when necessary to keep it in line with the solar year, a practice known as intercalation. In the realm of mathematics, the Sumerians introduced the sexagesimal base 60 number system which greatly enhanced their capability for complex calculations. This ingenious system is why today we divide an hour into 60 minutes and a circle into 360 degrees. Sumerian astronomers were also meticulous sky watchers, charting stars, planets, and constellations. These celestial maps were not only essential for navigation and timekeeping, but also played a significant role in shaping their astrological and religious beliefs. Interestingly, some scholars believe that the ziggurats, which were massive temple complexes, might have doubled as observatories where priests could observe celestial movements to better plan agricultural and religious events. Transitioning into some of the more speculative interpretations of Sumerian knowledge, Zechariah Sitchin's theories offer an intriguing, if controversial, perspective on Sumerian texts. Sitchin reads the Enuma Elish, a Mesopotamian creation epic, as a reflection of real cosmic events influenced by a mysterious planet called Nibiru, which supposedly orbits the Sun every 3,600 years. He posits that this planet's close approaches to Earth have triggered significant geological and atmospheric changes recorded throughout history. Further expanding on his theories, Sitchin describes the Anunnaki, traditionally viewed as gods of the Mesopotamian pantheon, as advanced extraterrestrial beings from Nibiru. He suggests that these beings genetically engineered early humans to serve as laborers, accelerating the development of Sumerian civilization with technologies like agriculture and metalworking. This, he argues, is evident in various Sumerian artifacts that he believes depict not myth but historical and technological truths. These interpretations, while not widely accepted in mainstream archaeology, continue to captivate the imagination of many and add an intriguing layer to our understanding of ancient Sumerian achievements.